Chris Roberts was born May 27, 1968 in California. Although he was raised in Manchester, England. This is actually where he started his career making video games as a teenager. He then came back to the US where he would be hired by Origin Systems in Austin, Texas. This is opposed to Richard Garriott who was born in Cambridge, England and then raised in Texas where he founded Origin and then became Lord British who would rule over Britannia. Well, anyway, by the time Roberts was 18, he had already developed several games. Strikers Run and Wizardor were some of the more popular ones. If you've never heard of these games, well, they were originally released for the BBC Micro. This was an 8-bit computer in the same vein as the Commodore 64, except produced earlier and by the British Broadcasting Company. These headless computers were incredibly popular there, having much more market share than the NES. In fact, if you were a kid in England in the mid-80s, you probably hadn't even played this game. Now this brings us to an interesting crossroads. We mentioned Elite before as an influence on Wing Commander. Well, Elite was initially developed and only released in Great Britain by Firebird for the BBC Micros. The president of Firebird, Martin Davies, brought Elite stateside to the PC market in 1986, and then, in 1989, started working for Origin Systems. Here, he and Roberts would work together on the Wing Commander series. Davies even appeared in Wing Commander 2 as the voice of Admiral Tolan, long before Andy McDowell would take over the role for Wing Commander 3. Now get out of here! And I hope we never meet again, traitor! Robert's side-scrollers sold well, but he really wanted to create a role-playing game. So in 1988, he came back to the US and found a job at Origin Systems. He first helped with Ultima 5, and was able to work on his own project, an icon-based RPG called Times of Lore. The icon-based controls were a radical departure from the text-based controls of Ultima 5. Now I won't pretend to know the inner workings of Origin at the time of these games, but it would be easy to see how Times of Lore influenced and changed from Ultima 5 to Ultima 6 which is a hybrid of icon and text-based controls. In any case, most gamers would agree that this was the most dramatic positive change in the series. It was this solid foundation of work that allowed Robert's carte blanche on his next project, which would be Wing Commander, whose influence on PC gaming and gaming in general couldn't have happened without Origin Systems. Their tagline was, we create worlds, and it wasn't just some PR rhetoric. They really strove to push their titles beyond anything that was on the market at the time, in both technology and even the materials that came with the game. To give a contemporary example, Origin was Blizzard before Blizzard was Blizzard. They had a few select intellectual properties and made sure they only appeared in top-notch games. They certainly weren't afraid of delaying their games until they were done, either. It did differ in one significant way, though. One, two, three, four. Where Blizzard always tried to make their games run optimally on a wide range of computers, this little Austin, Texas-based software developer was for constantly pushing PCs to their full potential, and more often than not, to a fault. The majority of computers available at any given release couldn't play them at full settings. What this meant, though, was that Chris Roberts would be allowed to really create the game that he wanted to. And now, he wanted to create an epic space combat game. Roberts has stated that his decision was heavily influenced by the fact that there had not been any Star Wars space combat games developed for the PC. And actually, LucasArts started development on X-Wing as a reaction to the success of Wing Commander. Larry Holland, who developed X-Wing for LucasArts, had said that they wanted him to produce a Wing Commander clone, which thankfully he didn't because X-Wing is a great game in its own right. <laughs> 